right now we go up to I'd like to bring in a very talented a very blessed brother in christ now who's here with me to do the outreach message tonight he is like myself the lone west coast representatives tonight he's from bulletin california he became a musician at the age of four when his grandfather inspired him with a fun song on the piano at the age of 15 he is the keyboardist and songwriter for the christian new wave band upstairs who had the pleasure of opening for acts such as the altar boys and daryl mansfield and yes we featured uh, some of the upstairs stuff on our show it is fantastic he has now been leading worship for nearly 40 years not a day over 20 though because we don't we don't want to age because he's really not that old in southern california and in mexico his singing is characterized by joy passion and enthusiasm i second all of that please welcome <laughs> our great brother in christ brad erickson here to do the outreach message tonight brad good evening oh. once again good sir all that talk about my singing and i'm, I'm not even gonna sing tonight <laughs> no you're not you are great um one of the things that's near and dear to your heart as well is just um bringing the word and bringing some great encouragement um what do you love most about just bringing people um his word and just his joy and his encouragement because you've got such an enthusiasm for that too because his word points us to a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not just some dead old manuscript. It's, it's his word is life. It's sharp and active. It's sharper than any two edged sword. And, and, you know, Jesus is the bread of life and he, he's even called the word, you know, but, um, uh Oh, am I frozen? Ah, uh, all right. There I am. Oh, there you're right. you're good. <laughs> there I am. But yeah, yeah. It's just, it's a, it's a way to, it's the steps that we take to get to Jesus through, his word and it's so practical and just touches every area of our life if we really dig into it so yeah i'm excited about um getting into god's word together with y'all tonight let's do it uh what have you got for us there brad we'd love to hear the it's time for the word here tonight bring it pastor well i guess well, not your pastor but you're great the <laughs> deliver of the word our outreach speaker tonight brad erickson brad take it away what have you got amen for us tonight? amen well, it's more than a coincidence that um, Catherine and Joseph were just talking about that horizontal relationship that we have with people and that vertical relationship we have with God and how the two are intertwined. And because God, you know, put on my um, heart before I knew that they were going to be talking about that. That's how God works. God organizes um, every detail of these Red Rooms broadcasts from, from the artist to the, the person that's sharing the word. There's always something that God wants to weave into it and a message. And one of it right now, I believe, is relationships. And um, Jesus, right before he's about to die on the cross, he, um, he prayed this prayer to the Father. It's a very impactful prayer. And it says this in John 17, 14 through 21. Jesus is praying to the Father. He says, I'd get, I've given them your word. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Brothers and sisters, we are not of the world. We're in the world, but we're not of it. And then Jesus continues, I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. You know who that is? The devil, right? They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. Jesus was praying for you and for me, saying, Father, sanctify them in the truth. You know, to sanctify means like, like the word um, uh, santo in Spanish. It means to make holy, make us holy through his word. That's what we're going to do tonight. And it, verse 18, it says, as you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself. If you know Spanish, concentrate, consecrate sounds a lot like con sagrar. That's the word in Spanish for consecrate and also Latin. But um, it means with bleeding. Wow. Jesus, through his blood, he was about to die on the cross before he prayed this prayer. And he says, for the sake I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in the truth, made holy like him. I do not ask for these only, now, talking about the people that lived back then, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, us today, that they all may listen, that they all may be one, just as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. But there's one little problem, not a little problem. We have a problem. Look at that picture. 
We often attack each other instead of being one, like Jesus calls us to be. So the, the, the message the Lord put on my heart to share with you all tonight is solving conflicts God's way. You think, well, don't we usually do a gospel message? There will be some gospel. There will be an invitation to Jesus. But we need to know that the world, the word of God is practical, and it touches on every area of our life. It's not just something out there. It's down to earth. It's rubber meets the road. And we're going to do that right now. We're going to actually pray right now and ask the Holy Spirit to just um, make his words, the words of God, leap off the page and into our minds, into our hearts, and into our lifestyles. So can you guys agree with me in prayer right now? Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for sending your word. We thank you for sending your one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us, Lord God. And we thank you that even before he died, right before he died on the cross, he didn't, you know, just pray about himself. He prayed about us, saying that he wants us to be one. Lord God, I pray, Lord, that as, we, as your word goes forth, Lord, from my lips tonight, Lord God, it will be empowered by your Holy Spirit, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that every recipient of your words tonight from your Holy Scriptures, Lord God, will be penetrated and changed. Let me be changed and conform to your image tonight, that every person hearing right now or following along in their Bibles right now, Lord God, be impacted and let us truly be able to fulfill what you prayed in that prayer, that we would be one with you and with each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So what does God have to say? Does the Bible tell us anything practical? Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, first of all, let's just say this is something very, very obvious. Hurtful words and actions crush other people's spirit. Is there anybody who could testify that that is true? Maybe your words intentionally or unintentionally have crushed somebody's spirit. And certainly growing up, if your parents aren't perfect, they crush your spirit at some time. Other people, friendships, you know, ex-girlfriends, ex-boyfriends, whatever. And let's see what the word of God has to say about that. It says in Proverbs 27.3, a stone is heavy and sand is weighty, but resentment caused by a fool is even heavier. We might have been that fool who has caused resentment in someone else. We might have been affected by a spouse, a parent, or a friend that was being a fool at that moment. And thank, thank God we're not going to just stop here at the problem. We're going to continue forth and talk about the solution but it also says in proverbs 17 22 to understand the problem even deeper a cheerful heart is good medicine i've actually this is not a lie this is not a lie i've had on different occasions children that had the flu the fever whatever and i would just go spend time with them just to make them laugh and whatever and they say what i'm better <laughs> a cheerful heart is good medicine doctors have proven that things like uh, stomach cancer and, and different uh, maladies of the of the body can be formed by things like unforgiveness, resentment, and so forth. So the Bible says, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. And Proverbs 18, 14 says, the human spirit can endure a sick body. And there's been a lot of people sick during pandemic, right? But who can bear a crushed spirit? I know when we're all kids, we learned, Sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You know, you can heal from a, a physical bruise, but some people, they take resentment with them their whole life because they don't know what to do with it. We will talk about that too, what to do with it. Amen. And so when you have a relationship now in this, these pictures that you're seeing on your screen here, you're going to see you know, a man and a wife. And these principles apply to friendships. And uh, father, daughter, father, son, you know, parent, child, whatever, um, you know, you name it. So this, but, but these are especially true in a marriage relationship. Why? Because you take somebody that's grown up in one family, one way of life, and somebody that grows up in another family with a different mentality, a different way of life, and they get together expecting everything's going to be good all the time. And they have some very sharp weight differences in how they do things and how they see the world. And so um, sometimes you have to have a difficult conversation that might not be comfortable, but it's necessary. 
but you don't, but you don't have to verbally abuse. You don't have to, um, you know, hurt people in the process. We're going to talk about the, the parameters that God gives us to come out of this with everybody intact. Win, win, not win, lose, not lose, lose, <laughs> win, win. All right. So I hope you're interested in that. And in Proverbs 27 verses five and six, it says, better is open rebuke than hidden love. Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. Why does an en enemy multiply kisses? Because to your face, oh brother, you're you're my man. You're you're the, you're the guy. You're the you're the brother. Behind your back, they're they're saying, hey, you know, take you should block this guy on Facebook and this and that, and talking bad about you, talking smack. So no, God wants us to talk directly to the person that either we've offended or that has offended us, and make things. Right, not go behind their back and talk, smile to the face, and then behind them rip them apart. Right, so um, let's look at the next next principle here. Now, God wants us to guard our heart and protect ourselves from the other person's anger, and it says in Proverbs four twenty three, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. They say, okay, I know, I know, I know. I'll just run away. I won't even listen to them. I'll just tune them off, tell them, talk to my hand. Not so fast, not so fast. Yet, don't shy away from a loving confrontation. If you need to give a confrontation or if you need to receive a confrontation, do not shy away from it. And here's what it says in 1 John 4.18. Um, it says, there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out all fear for fear has to do with punishment and whoever fears has not been perfected in love so love should be our motivation that guides us in the way we speak to people even if we're uncomfortable we love them enough that we're going to tell them the truth and we love them enough that we're going to listen to them when they tell us the truth amen and and also in ephesians um 4.15, it says, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. Speaking the truth in love. Some people are all about love. Oh, I don't want to say the truth because it doesn't feel loving. And some people, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. I'm going to tell them the truth. And they leave out the love. Speak the truth in love. Do not leave out one or the other. They are both essential in your relationship with people. Amen. All right, so before we continue on, though, I must make a disclaimer. Um, this is the right one. Let's see here. Let me go back a little bit. Yeah, it is. We need to choose our battles, don't we? And I wonder if I... We need to choose our battles and ask ourselves this question. Will it be safe if you confront the person? And will it really help or should you drop the matter okay so not every time is a good time to confront people some people are not in a, in the state of mind or mental health that they can receive anything that you would have to say to them they will just chew you up and spit you out right <laughs> so there's a time people have their, their seasons they have their, their they're up and they're down their cycles and and god will tell you you know if it's not the right time and, and you'll have you'll use your wisdom right and so um you know, Proverbs 17, 12 says it is safer to meet a bear robbed of her cubs than to confront a fool caught in foolishness. And 1 Peter 4, 8 says, above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. So what, that, what, I'm, what that's saying is that there are some things that you, you might need to forgive unilaterally you know, on your own and just cover the sins even without the confrontation you know if, if it's not possible if it's not going to be um you know ha be fruitful like you'd want it to be because in reality here's 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 a formula we might want to learn here expectations minus reality equals disappointment so you, if, if you have high hopes that you're just going to walk in there and tell the person you know what you're doing is wrong and they're going to say you're right <laughs> you're, I've been so bad. I'm going to change right now. That doesn't always happen. And so sometimes your expectations are here. Reality is this. And the margin between the two is your disappointment. 
obviously if god tells you to go to talk to the, the person and how and what to say then do it right but have realistic expectations you really expect that this that your arguing and insults are going to change the person if not you need to change your approach amen all right so um one thing that people often do and this really bothers me personally and i'm sure it bothers you too is if you come to confront somebody about something say brother you know I, i've noticed that um you know um you you say mean things to me a lot oh like you always say nice things to me oh remember that time you whoa dude <laughs> I hope that's not what you do. I hope that's not what we're doing is, is if somebody comes to you and says, you know, I have this problem with you. Do we have the maturity to not counterattack, but instead to say, you know what? Let me think about that. Am I really doing this? If so, I mean, yeah, you're right. I should change. And it might be that they're way more in the wrong than you, but maybe you can model for them what it looks like when you actually are teachable. When you actually take a piece of advice and say, let me consider it. I'm not in full agreement with you on this, but let me tell you, you are partially right. And I'm going to receive that area, which you are partially right. And I wouldn't like to repent. I would like to apologize. Wouldn't the world be a better place if we all would do that? Don't counterattack or become sarcastic. Stay humble and stay loving. First Peter um, 3, 8 through 12 says like this. Finally, all of you should be of one mind. Sympathize with each other. Love each other as brothers and sisters. Be tender-hearted, and keep a humble attitude. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. That is what God has called you to do, and He will grant you His blessing. You bless the you bless the people that are giving you a hard time. God will bless you for it. For the scriptures say, if you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. I'm sure every one of us can relate with, the, with you talking to somebody about something that bothers you, and then they attack you right back. And don't even address the issue. And that's exactly what we're talking about. Let us not be the people who are doing such a thing. Now, this is very, very um, common in a marriage situation. I can tell from my own personal experience, I am no longer married, but, you know, uh, I was married a short time, about 20 years ago. But here's the deal. Especially, and this might sound very stereotypical, and it is, maybe, um, Often, men are clueless, <laughs> you know, and, and you know, my, you know, and that when I was married, my wife would, say, would get real upset with me, and I, I had no idea. I really had no idea. I said, you know, well, tell me, did I, how did I offend you? Oh, you know, good and well. How I, no, I don't. I'm stupid. Sorry. Could you tell me again? I've told you. You already know. No, I'm sorry. I'm stupid. Please tell me again. And, and please do not punish the other person for being stupid <laughs> or being clueless or unable to read your mind there we go <laughs> <Whew. laughs> and i see joseph in the back room saying amen brother <laughs> he's laughing his head off over there because he knows it's true he knows it is true and let's see i'm looking for that one here Romans 15 one i lost my plates in my notes but it, it's good here oh um I don't know, I'm not finding it. I'll do, pull my Bible up, I guess. <laughs> okay, so I'll pull up my, I'll do a manual because that one, I, don't, I can't find it in my little notes here. I'll pull it up manual style here. Romans 15, one, here it comes. Dun, 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 dun. I got this, um, okay, here. Of course, I have it in Spanish right now. So do you want to hear it in Spanish? <laughs> Let me change it to English now. Change resource. Um, ESV, how about that? Uh, here we go. It says, we who are strong have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. 
Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, but to build, um, but to build him up. Amen. So, so, you know, what I would suggest here is that if you are mad at somebody or you are hurt by somebody and they don't understand, they have a big, huge blind spot, patiently educate them, patiently tell them, you know, this is what I need from you and what I did not get. This is what you said. And I don't know if you meant it this way, but it really hurt me deeply. And just calmly talk. If the person's clueless, give them a clue, <laughs> right? All right, so um, we're going to continue on here. All right. I also um, have, a, on my notes, I didn't put on the outline, but it's about Roman, uh, 1 Peter 3, 18 through 12, 8 through 12. Was, it, was that it? Yeah. And it says, um, finally, all of you should be of one mind. Oh, I think I did that. Yeah, I, I read that. I read that. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of getting a little mixed up here, but it's going to come along. Another thing we need to understand is our anger does not change people. Am I frozen? Can you guys still hear me? You still hear me? Okay, good. <laughs> so hopefully my audio continues, at least if I freeze for whatever reason. Okay, so James 1.20, human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. That's it. You can yell. You can scream. You think maybe they'll, they'll, they'll change if I scream a little bit louder. You might get temporary compliance, but what you're not going to get is a changed life. You're going to get a person that's all the more embittered towards you. So that's really not what God wants. We also read in Luke 6, 28, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. All right, so if you've been mistreated, instead of lashing back at them, God calls us to bless them, to love them. Romans 12, 17 through 18 says, do not repay any, anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Amen. So you say, well, you can't make the. That's freezing, man. But maybe you can do your part. Amen. All right. We're getting towards the tail end of this here. God wants us to remain in a, in a, in a humble and flexible posture. Not to be stiff necked, you know, we're inflexible, but he wants us to be willing to bend, right? Maximize your own sins and faults and minimize the other person's. And it says in it says in Luke six forty two, um, how can you say to your brother, brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when you yourself fail to see the plank in your own eye, you hypocrite. First, take the plank out of your eye, and then you will clearly see to remove the speck from your brother's eye. But here's what it is: if you if you did something bad. Make it out to be a big deal. Like, I really failed you. And then the other person will say, no, no, it wasn't that bad. But if you act like what you did is little, the other person is going to try to make you say, no, it was big, you know. So maximize your own confession of what you've done, your participation to the problem, and minimize, overlook, right? Overlook um, and downplay, if anything, the, the, the offense the other person has done towards you. Also in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 and 5 says, Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others, and it is not self-seeking. So always be looking out for the good of the other person, not just yourself. John 15, 13 says, Greater love has no man, no one than this, to lay down his life for one's friend. So if you come to um, any kind of a conflict with the idea, you know what? I'm going to lay down my own rights and I'm going to look for out for the good of this person. Then God will also honor that. Amen. So, all right, we're going to continue on to the next thing. Now you do not have to, um, I'm sorry. You cannot give what you do not have. Amen. And so if you want to be able to love the other person in the way God wants you to, but your heart is black, you can't do it, right? And Luke 6, 40, uh, 42, I believe it is. I think I put 45, but it says, how can you say to your brother, bro no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, it is 645. 
A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. So you're not able to give love if, if you haven't received God's love in your heart. Amen. And Ezekiel 36, 26 has a solution for that. God says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Amen. All right. So this is this is the most important thing here. If, if you missed out everything I talked about, don't miss this right now. Come to Jesus. Uh oh, did we lose? Bro? <laughs> we were just getting to the most important thing, I guess, and we <laughs> just right on cue, we end up losing Brad there. We'll give Brad just a second to see if uh, it, maybe he comes back here in just a second. But very, very, um, and I'll I'll stall for time a second to hopefully Brad will maybe realize he cut and and we'll get back on here in a second and we'll give him another a minute or so to maybe come back on to finish, but. I also want to challenge people. Um, yeah, yeah, Kathleen, he is gone. Unfortunately, yeah, Brad has left the building. Uh, hopefully, we're just getting to the most important thing, his most important takeaway, and we'll hopefully find out what that is before we leave the air tonight. But I want to challenge everyone as well before we um, hopefully get Brad back on to finish and hopefully um, continue this, finish up this great night of worship and, and music with Jonas. <clears throat> Out of all the principles that were spoken tonight, I challenge each and every one of us with our relationships, find out what of those principles that, oh, now we lost red. Oh, goodness gracious. Cat's thirst the host now. How dangerous is this? We better behave ourselves as long as that's the case, or uh, Jonas coming up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to, yeah, I do want to challenge everyone tonight. Um, examine these principles, figure out which one of these do we struggle in, in our own relationships? Do we struggle with anger? Do we struggle with looking to the other person for change instead of looking maybe to ourselves to change just as much? Do we struggle with our delivery and how we deliver and how we carry on? conflicts and conversations do we have fear in the first place of even confronting people in love when we see a brother or sister stumble is fear a big equation in our relationship are we are we submissive to the other person because we're so trapped up in fear that there's an unhealthy dynamic analyze their own relationships whether it be parent child whether it be friend to a friend whether it would be husband and wife um, boyfriend, girlfriend, like Brad has said, these principles apply to a lot of different relationships that mean something in our lives. And so I challenge really each and every one tonight to take some of those principles that Brad said and really analyze, not necessarily for the other person, because we can't change another person, no matter how hard we try, no matter how much we want to, sometimes in certain relationships, we can't break through to, to, to another person. The only person we really have any influence and change ultimately between us and the father is ourselves. We got to first allow him to change us and to do our part in our relationships for any relationship to be fruitful and healthy in the first place. We, do we want the other person to change? True. And sometimes that's where the disconnect and that's where the break happens is sometimes as much as we're doing our part, the other person, we can't, we can't, we can't make them get on board and we can't make them change. And sometimes that's the saddest part as Kat and I were talking about, about loving each other where we are at, because sometimes you do come to an impasse, unfortunately. Sometimes you do come to an agree to disagree moments. And sometimes it's pretty severe ones. But all you can do is continue to work on yourself. All you, can, all you can do is just keep analyzing what stands in my way of my dealings with people. Is it fear? Is it anger? Is it just not knowing how to deal correctly with confrontation? Do I shy away? Do I not want to deal with stuff in my own walk? 
Is it just defense mechanisms and patterns that have been there for months and or years that are bigger than us? Because sometimes we also need to seek wise counsel and realize, wow, I've been dealing with this for a long time. Or this, this thing has been here for a long time. So maybe in a parent-child relationship or may, maybe in a friend-to-friend relationship that's just been broken for years. Maybe it's a husband and wife or a boyfriend-girlfriend dynamic that's been broken for years because you've gotten so used to doing it a certain way. That maybe there's benefit in seeking wise counsel. That maybe those, those issues are bigger than you. Or maybe you need to seek some wise counsel to maybe help you fully get over those and truly make it healthy again. So I challenge people to really just dig in to what Brad was saying tonight. I know we lost Brad kind of unceremoniously just as we were getting to his one key point. But I just want to challenge people tonight based on what Brad says. Analyze those, those relationship points that he was talking about and figure out what applies to you. Figure out what you need changing whether it be your anger, whether it be your fear, whether it be not loving as, as you are called to do, figure out in your own walk where you might be lacking. And yes, the art of picking your battles. And um, so we just challenge everyone, use some of those principles, use some of what we talked about tonight to dig deeper in your relationships and find out Are they quality relationships or are they not? And if they're not, can they get there? Can they be restored? And what will it take to get there? And remember, in relationships, it does take two people to tango. It does take two people doing their part for it to be fruitful, for it to be wonderful, for it to be moving as God called it to. If it's not, it will always have problems. But it starts, of course, by us doing our part. And then that's where you find out how quality a relationship is, is once you find out, are you doing your part? You find out if the other person is doing theirs. It's definitely, as we, as Kat and I were saying earlier, it's much easier when you're, you're by yourself and you can control the pace of healing a little bit because it's just you and the father. It's a little bit more dynamically difficult when you have two people trying to move and trying to, in a busy life, trying to make sense of it all and try to to heal while taking into consideration the pace of which the other person is healing, the pace of which the other person, are they keeping pace with you? Are they not? Do they not want to at all? A lot of different variables. And so if you are in a difficult relationship and a challenging one, whatever it may be, our prayers go out to you. Um, and we just hope and we just pray that God continues to work through you in your situation and continues to show you wisdom of how you should appropriately deal with the relationships that are a little bit estranged and are a little bit challenged in your life and show you how those relationships should be best served moving forward. Are they best served by taking a step back just for the health of the relationship? Are they better served just digging in and trying to do the hard work? I mean, use wisdom. Use wisdom to see, have God lead you and and help you determine how is this relationship best served to be as best healthy as it can be or as it can get. And sometimes the difficult part is some of those relationships aren't meant to be restored, aren't meant to be healed. But you know what? If it doesn't, have God fill that void in your life. Have God fill that void and God will continue to bring, as long as you're doing what you're supposed to do, God will continue to fill that void in your life by bringing you people who will nurture your walk, who will love on you and help encourage you and continue to help you to be who you're called to be and help nurture that for you in your life. That's who you should surround yourself with in your life is people who will nurture the gifts and nurture the callings in you and respect God's giftings in you. And you respect it in each other. That's the beauty of a relationship that's built with Christ as the center, Christ as your rock. I'll bring in real quick, um, to, because we don't want to leave you with a cliffhanger like that. No, we're, we're not that you know crazy around here. I mean, we don't want to just cliffhang. No, we want to bring Brad Erickson back on here. It seems only right. 
I'm going to bring Brad back on here for a quick second because when we just left us, he said, if you get anything from me tonight, here is the one main point. And then boom, <laughs> he was gone. I'm like, yeah, that, no. Yeah, that was oh, intentional, like, brother. That was part of the game plan. To be continued. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at it again. <laughs> uh, so right. back to the main point. So Brad, before we left off, what is that main point that you want us to get tonight if we got nothing else from this very incredible message tonight? Well, you can you can try all you want to get your your um, relationship with people in order. But if you're missing that relationship with God Almighty, the creator of the universe who made you and loves you, you will be lacking. You won't be able to give because you don't have. <laughs> you won't be able to really um, reach that level that you really want of us being one with other people. And, and um, Jesus gave the best example for us in Philippians chapter two, where he, um, he talks about how he left heaven and all the, the luxuries and comforts of heaven and came down and became humbled himself to reach us. Why can't we humble ourselves like he did to, to be at peace with other people? And also, not only did he humble himself, but he died on the cross. So that that big that big chasm, that big canyon between us and him that was made by us and our sins can be bridged by the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because it says that in being found in human form, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. cross and therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. If you've never bowed your knee to Jesus Christ and confessed him as Lord, Romans 10, 9 says that if you confess Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And God will, Jesus will come take residence in you. He'll make you a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. A few with his Holy Spirit. Do you want that tonight? That's my question for whoever's listening tonight. Do you want that? How would you pass by an offer? The king of the universe paid at the ultimate price, and you just have to open the gift and say yes. It's free for you. It wasn't free for him. If you want Jesus in your heart, why don't you pray a prayer like this? And God wants to re revolutionize your, your relationships. He wants to re revolutionize your, your family. But first of all, he wants to do something in you, make you a new creation. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for whoever's listening out there tonight, Lord God, or even in the playback, Lord, that doesn't know you, has never had a personal encounter with you, with you as Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, who has humbled yourself to come down to earth and show us the way and to be the way, the truth and life for us, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that they would right now want to pray a prayer such as this. And you can feel free to repeat after me where you are. Dear, dear Jesus, I invite you to come into my life, to take control, to be my Lord, to be my Savior, to take my sins away. I ask you to take away my sins and fill me with your righteousness, fill me with your love and your peace and your Holy Spirit. Help me to follow you all the days of my life. Help me to grow in you, to be solid, to be a strong follower of you. And help me to love other people the way you loved me. And help me to, to not be prideful anymore. Help me to not follow myself and my own desires, but to be a blessing to others as I follow you. And your love is poured out through me to others. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed such a prayer, wow, let us know, because I would be excited to hear about that, because really, there's nothing better. I'm sure every one of these artists could agree with me. There's nothing better than knowing Jesus. And if you made that decision tonight, welcome to the family. God bless you. Amen. Love Amen. you, brother. Thank you, Brad, for bringing the word tonight and bringing some truths in our relationships um, so that we can be better servants, better people so that we may better be a, a true reflectant of Jesus in our lives to the people we care about and in our relationships. Thank you for sharing some of that truth with us. And hopefully people are going to apply in their everyday life to their relationships. Amen. Thank you for, for bringing those biblical you got truths it, my, my pleasure, brother.